For centuries, philosophers have wrestled with what's called the mind-body problem, or more recently, the hard problem of consciousness. Now, this is the problem of how consciousness relates to the physical world. Why is it that a physical system like myself is conscious and a rock isn't? Now, I think a rock isn't conscious, but there's a school of thought called panpsychism uh, where they wouldn't be so quick to say that a rock definitely isn't conscious. Now, panpsychism means that everything has a psyche or mind or consciousness. So it's the idea that everything is conscious, all of matter. It's not this distinction between unconscious inert matter like rocks and conscious systems like myself. Now, a lot of people think this sounds very um, kind of out there and unscientific, but people who popularize panpsychism, philosophers in this area, they often come to this conclusion quite reluctantly and because they think it really is the most philosophically and scientifically sensible position to hold. Now, why would you believe that beyond the consciousness that we can know in our own, in our own minds, that atoms are conscious and other, all material is conscious. Well, most people are motivated by just how hard the hard problem is. You know, it's really resisted a solution. It still hasn't been solved and we're not even, there's nothing out there that even seems like a solution at the moment. And so many philosophers and scientists throw up their hands and say, well, maybe we're just thinking about this entirely wrong. Maybe the reason we can't come up with an explanation as to how mind or consciousness emerges from the material, which is the, the usual assumption, they say, well, maybe that's because consciousness is a primitive. It's a fundamental feature of reality, like space and time. And if we just take consciousness as a fundamental fact, then we can start to do science on consciousness, but we, we need to accept that it, it can't be reduced. It can't be understood as emerging from matter because it's there in the beginning with matter. Now, there are many different schools of panpsychism, but most tend to hold that atoms and fundamental particles will have some kind of proto-consciousness, some kind of simple form of consciousness. And this is often referred to as some smaller version, some dimmer or you know minimal consciousness. And to me, this doesn't really resonate. I think either a system has subjective experience or it doesn't. And it doesn't make sense to say that something has a kind of minimal consciousness. But um, putting that aside, the panpsychist argument is atoms will have some kind of consciousness, some kind of experience, some kind of awareness. and these, as they combine into systems like human beings, the consciousnesses get added together, they get somehow summed to create your consciousness. And so the biggest difficulty of panpsychism is, is this combination problem, which is its own hard problem really, um, in that it doesn't, it's not easily solved how you would add together different conscious subjects into a larger conscious subject like myself. But this really is an area of active research in philosophy. And I believe there's a book that came out a few days ago in America, and I think it's about to come out uh, in the UK, um, called Galileo's Error by a British philosopher called Philip Koff. Um, he's written a lot of great stuff on, on panpsychism. Uh, I'll link to a recent article in the conversation that he wrote in the description. And he's putting forward a way of thinking about this that actually really resonates in that he basically says the quantitative world is what science deals with and the qualitative world is what consciousness is and those are just two different things you can't use the tools of science to understand consciousness and the title of the book Galileo's Error refers to the so Philip Goff is arguing that Galileo eff effectively founded science with the idea that science was going to confine itself to the quantitative it was going to set aside consciousness and just focus on the quantitative world that can be described with mathematics and this is a mistake because he's arguing that it actually makes far more sense to say that the material and the mental, you know, the quantitative physical world and the world of consciousness are two aspects to the same thing and that all of reality is pervaded by some kind of consciousness.